no matter what you want to buy. You'll find it all on the hub. The SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. My name is Eric Ajitiana and we are in Accra, Ghana, Teshin. Um, and this is the Kanekwe Carpentry Workshop. Kanekwe is the originator of designer coffins and uh, he happens to be my grandfather. What you, you're seeing around here happens to be coffins, but before the 50s, they were actually uh, palanquins. And palanquins are what chiefs ride in during festivals and debes, what they used to carry them in. So um, what actually happened was he was building a palanquin in the shape of a cocoa pot for a chief to ride in. But unfortunately, the chief died, and he had to convince the family to change the idea of using the palanquin into a coffin and the family agrees to what he was saying to them because um, you really have a very short period to prepare a coffin or to buy a coffin for the disease. Normally you have, um, let's say, three to five days to pre preserve the body. So actually, as he managed to convince them, they understood what he wanted to do and quickly they gave him the opportunity. So th this chief was eventually buried in his palanquin as a coffin. The other one was in 51, when um, there was this old, great old woman of East, that is the great grandmother, who was living around and, you know, it was during that time they were building the airport. So this old woman was all the time like, I would really love to fly in one of those aeroplanes one day, but she never got to make it and she passed away. So Kwe, being a carpenter, decided to build this old woman a coffin in the shape of an aeroplane. And you know the surprising thing about it? It was within five days. So everyone was just shocked to what really happened. So finally, the natives of Teshin were like, where was this coffin actually built? So people were actually going to him in his family house where he had one bench building the coffins. Little by little, they were commissioning fishing boats, the fishes and on and on and on and finally, he managed to buy, to raise some money, buy the land here, settle here, until in 1992, he passed away. He was actually succeeded by two of his children, that is Sidi, my father, and then the brother, um, Soa. Soa passed away in 1999 and was actually left with only Sidi, my father. I was roughly in um, the GSS when Soa passed away, so he was actually left with only Sidi. And upon my graduation to the senior high school, entering the university. I had to choose between the university and then coming here. And finally, you know, my dad says, no, you don't have to be here, you have to go to school. But I said to him, I have the, um, 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 the abilities to, 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 to turn the place into something else. So just give me the opportunities because this is where Design Coffins was actually started. And you can't see the place just like that. We need to grow the place. We need to have a website and other things. But he, he still never agreed to what I was saying. But, you know, it got to a point I have to say to him, I'm more than 20 years now, and now I have to make decisions on my own because that is my future. So nothing really happened. He didn't say anything again until I joined here in 2005, little by little, up to this day. <laughs> So at a point in time, what I understood was, it was up to me to decide what I could do best. And what I understood was, this shop was actually functioning the best. And at a point in time, it, it fell down, it went down, and the other shops were rather, you know, even though they were not much educated, they started growing through the assistance of other people. You know, so with me understanding what was going on, I knew with the contacts I have, I could improve very much here. So in 2005, I graduated the senior high school. In 2006, there was this hurricane. 
And finally, I have to say, I want to be here. I applied a couple of times in 2006, 2007 to go to Europe. Of course, to start life, maybe to hustle and, you know, but all the time I was refused. So little by little to 2008, I had a couple of friends who, you know, were visiting and, you know, I was taking the time, you know, spending with them, speaking with them. And finally, they got to understand what I was actually trying to do here. Um, there was this an exhibition in Antwerp, uh, Boulevard Amandla, in Antwerp. So they bought um, 10 coffins from me. I sold it at a very cheap price. And, you know, I want, I want to go to Europe. I want to be there for the exhibition. So we had a very good relation. They understood even if I'm in Europe, I'm not going to escape, but I'm going to come back. I took a tour in Europe. I was in France, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Holland. And what I understood was, if it was the building of the coffins that brought me here, then I have a very good, good future back home. So I need to come back home and then get serious to what I'm doing more. In 2010, there was this um, exhibition in Senegal, Ted Black World Festival. And I was actually asked to bring something, but not a coffin. So it has to be a design. So I made something in the form of an iPhone, sent it to Senegal. And of course, I went there also for one week. After I came back, within two weeks, I have to go back to Korea for also another um, ex exhibition. That is design is design or not design in Guangzhou. So I was actually also in um, Guangzhou, uh, Guangzhou Biennale. I was in South Korea for uh, two weeks. So I was actually um, supposed to be in the US. After coming back from Korea within two weeks, I have to be in the US. And I was refused the American visa. Very disappointing. So it was actually Ron Wyden who sent a letter to the embassy and finally I got a visa. So I was in the US with, let's say, a couple of months visa and I stayed in the US for one month and I came back home. Um, I was still in touch, we were working. Um, this place got serious. I was sometimes having my boys leaving, but you know, I have two key people I was actually working with together with them and they really supported a lot. So actually, if I'm away, they will be behind and then support me together with my father. Of course, um, after my senior high school, to join this place, um, I mean, friends and, you know, relatives were really not much okay. Sometimes I used to meet people and what they say to me is, um, I mean, you went to school all your life, I mean, to the senior high school, you're about to enter the university and then you just drop and you join a carpentry shop and, you know, and, Okay, the challenge is, um, actually when I drop um, from, I mean after the senior high school and then about to enter the university, after saying I'm not going to the university, I, I mean I said strongly and boldly to my friend Jim, I mean Jean Michel Russi, I said to him, of course I mean I could graduate the university and then finally what will happen is I have to go to ministries and queue in search of a job and you know, so I'm, I'm taking this decision, whether it's a risk or whatever, I want to do it. So just give me all your support. Um, I had a lot of friends and relatives were like, um, after all this school and, and you know, carpentry here is considered, I mean, it's, 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 it's a job for, for, for the uneducated here. That is the way it's considered. Um, so when I actually joined, it was just a coffin building shop, just like that. I tried um, a lot of times, you know, um, to go to bars, to go to restaurants, to explain to them what I'm doing, um, if they could find a place where we could display. So the whole idea won't be just a coffin for people, uh, I mean, de deceased people, but and art pieces to decorate places, to, de to, you know, I'm just trying to revive the whole thing so they stop, you know, um, this whole idea of, you know, it's for dead bodies or whatever. So I actually went to a couple of restaurants. It was only one who accepted me. And um, he asked me to, to, to bring um, maybe two pieces. They assisted me, they made me, I made a whole structure. They paid for it. I took the coffin there in, in a truck 
maybe two or three coffins. And finally, when I got to the place, the people around were like, no, 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 you brought death to, to, to closer to rest. And I said to them, this is not death. These are just wood we've joined together. Just believe in that. I mean, these are art pieces and it's good if we could improve on that. It's good if we could let our children understand or, you know, be part of it. And, you know, it was just crazy. No one wants to understand what I'm, I, I was saying. And finally, you know what, what happened? There was this construction of the road. The structure we built, they have to clear everything. So I have to go for the art pieces, bring them here back again, put them here with no really, you know, motivation. I, I, I joined um, 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 Student and Youth Organization, C2. That was in, 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 in um, Osu. I joined them trying to share with other children the, the idea, I mean, the little idea I have, the art piece I'm doing, I wanted to share with other people from other, you know, other places. And no one wants to understand me. The little advice I'm going to give to people who graduate from the university, young people in Africa and the world is, everyone can make it wherever he is, he or she is. We have a lot of people who tries to go out of the country in search of greener pastures. I saw a couple of them. I don't want to talk a lot about them, but they are really, I mean, a couple of them are really in a mess. They never want to talk. They come back home. They tell their friends, their colleagues, their relatives. I mean, they have the best of jobs. But of course, they are never happy. If I had taken that decision to be in Europe or in the US, I'm not sure I would be happy as I am today now. <sighs> Young African, I mean, we can do a lot. We have a lot to achieve here in our motherland. Yes, we can achieve. It does not matter if you are a carpenter, if you are a mechanic. And parents must let their children make their decisions. And it's, it must not always be doctors. It must not always be lawyers. Just do whatever you are doing well, and I think things will go best for you. Hi, guys. If you just enjoyed watching that video and you want to stay up to date with the latest in entertainment, lifestyle, and more from inside Africa, why don't you hit the subscribe button right now? And if you want to keep on watching videos, then just simply hit the more videos button.